15 Romans. It is Friday morning. Nice, nice to have Friday. you here. Dave has Good a day off, but I get Miguel for the next mm. half hour. Uh, 5.30 in the East. Up first, explosive new reporting this morning. Um, the president's lawyers are, are looking for ways to undermine the Russia investigation by special counsel, Rob, counsel Robert Mueller. The Washington Post and the New York Times report attorneys and aides are scouring the backgrounds of Mueller and his staff, searching for conflicts of interest they can use to undercut the Russia probe. Papers cite several sources familiar with this research effort. Now, the Washington Post reporting the president has asked about his power to pardon aides, family members, even himself. One advisor told the Post the president was simply curious about the reach of his pardoning authority. This follows the president's earlier attacks on Mueller and other officials connected to the Russia investigation. Now, with all that in mind, the president is reshuffling the, the legal team charged with helping him navigate the Russia probe. Two sources tell CNN the president's longtime personal attorney, Mark Kasowitz, will see his role as lead lawyer on the Russia investigation diminish. Now, veteran attorney, uh, Washington attorney John Dowd and another Trump lawyer, Jay Sekulow, will take the, the lead as the president's personal attorneys on the Russia inquiry. Uh, sources say by working outside the White House, Dowd and Sekulow's dealings with the president will be protected by the same attorney-client privilege afforded all U.S. citizens. Inside the White House, attorney Ty Cobb will take the lead on, on legal and communication strategy for Russia. He'll be effectively replacing communication strategist, strategist Mark Carollo, who resigned on Thursday. All right, let's break all of these new developments down this morning. Political economist Greg Valier is here, chief strategist right. at, at Horizon Investments. And part of his job is to look at what's happening uh, inside the Beltway and, and, and what's happening you know, in global markets and figure out what each means for the other. Uh, so he's deeply sourced here for us. Glad to have you here this morning. I want you to listen to something that yesterday we heard from Sarah Huckabee Sanders, one of the president's spokeswomen, um, about uh, the, the special counsel and the scope of the investigation uh, in particular. I think that the president, the point he's trying to make is that um, the clear purpose of the uh, Russia investigation is to review Russia's meddling in the election and that that should be the focus of the investigation, nothing beyond that. The president's making clear that the special counsel should not move outside of the scope of the investigation. Greg, I want to quote something that was in the Washington Post that I think is fascinating um, about his tax returns in particular, and I think they relate here. Trump right. has been fuming about the probe in recent weeks as he has been informed about the legal questions that he and his family could face. He has told aides he was especially disturbed after learning Mueller would be able to access several years mm -hmm. of his tax returns. Uh, the president has Russia fever. He blames the press for making this up out of nothing, but he, is, he has Russia fever here. Christine, he almost single-handedly is keeping the story alive. He, he, he reignited this firestorm with the New York Times uh, two or three days ago in the interview. Unfortunately for him, he cannot pick and choose what gets investigated. That's up to, to Mueller. And, and I, I do think that there's something about Trump's tax returns that gets him extremely agitated. I don't think it's that he didn't pay any taxes. I think we all know that. I think his tax returns list sources where he has money uh, where he owes money, and I think some of those sources are in Russia. It mm. seems so simple. The more you tell the cop, don't look in the basement, the more the cop wants to look in the basement. It's absolutely right. bizarre. And any investigator, follow the money is rule number one of any investigation. <laughs> follow the money, right? Uh, indeed. Um, in that New York Times uh, article and, and wide-ranging interview you mentioned, he didn't exactly express his love for the attorney general who has been with him, Jeff Sessions, through thick and thin, very early on his campaign. Uh, basically said he wouldn't have picked him if uh, he knew that he was going to recuse himself from Russia. Here's what Jeff Sessions yeah. had to say about that. I have uh, the honor of serving in, as attorney general. It's something that uh, uh, it goes beyond any thought I would have ever had for myself. We love this job. We love this department. And I plan to continue to do so as long as uh, that is appropriate. As long as it's appropriate. Right. I, r reading the tea leaves even from this distance, it doesn't sound exactly like uh, confidence. No, Miguel, and I, I would say that when it, when it comes to sessions, this is still another example of how a lot of quality people don't want to go to work in this administration. Because if the president is willing to throw sessions under the bus, uh, what does that say about other people who may decide 
maybe it's not worth my while to join this group. There are some, um, there are some Republicans who have been telling me that uh, while all this is happening, there's real work being done behind the scenes. That Stephen yes. Mnuchin is moving forward on, on plans for tax reform. That Paul Ryan is working on, you know, with House Republicans on their budget proposal or their budget that, they, that, they, um, that they've actually, the committee has already passed. Well, is that true? Is there work being done? And do you see the president's policy agenda slowly moving forward? Or is all of this noise um, slowing his policy agenda? I think the agenda is moving a bit on taxes, maybe uh, in spite of him rather than because of him. But I do think that there's some real progress being made by Mnuchin, uh, Congressman Brady, head of the Ways and Means yeah. Committee, Paul Ryan. I, I do think that we'll get a tax outline this fall and we'll see progress there. Unfortunately for them, they first have to get some budget issues resolved, and that could be almost as contentious as the health care stuff. You know, Greg, we've seen these theme weeks. This week is a uh, Made in America week. Uh, and, and, yep. and sometimes, you know, they, 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 have, they have these, like, nice events where they can promote something. You know, they promoted this new uh, injectable mm -hmm. glass uh, thing yesterday, yep. which is, you know, which is it's fair. It's, it's going to be 4,000 jobs. You know, that's legit. Um, yet, on the same day, Mar-a-Lago and another, and, and, and a, and a right. golf uh, course in Jupiter, Florida, owned by the Trump, um, the Trump family, um, they're filing for more foreign workers. So the buy American, hire American, except if you're one of my companies. Do, 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 does that stuff undermine his message? It does. I think that it's really hard for him to stay on message. That's one of the problems. But I should say for the markets, you made a really good point. I think there's some progress being made behind the scenes. I think there's a very pro-business climate here in Washington. The economic fundamentals are really quite excellent right now. So there are a lot of positives for the markets. The one thing that I think could really unnerve the markets is if it started to look like tax reform was dead. We're not there yet. I think we'll get a tax bill, but chances of a big tax bill have diminished over the last month or so. Three months till open enrollment also for, help, for Obamacare. And, and, Don't know what's happening And midterms there. coming up and health care uh, not uh, happening, so you're not going to have all those savings that they were counting on from health care. It just it looks like whatever they were going to do on tax reform is going to be a heck of a lot smaller uh, than they were imagining just a few months ago. That's right. Yep. All right. Greg Fallier, have a great weekend. Thank you. All right. Thanks for you stopping too. by this morning. All right, the U.S. is fining ExxonMobil for violating Russian sanctions while Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was still in charge. The, uh, the Treasury Department is slapping a $2 million fine on Exxon, claiming it demonstrated reckless disregard for those Russia sanctions. This all stems from a 2014 deal between Exxon executives and this man, Igor Session. Session runs Rosneft. That's the Russia's state-run oil company. He is a close ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Uh, the Treasury Department didn't specify the, uh, which Exxon executives were involved and didn't name Tillerson. Tillerson stepped down as CEO last year, but had personal business dealings with Session when he ran ExxonMobil. And this move raises concerns over his deep business ties to Russia. Exxon says the fine is fundamentally unfair. Another record high for the NASDAQ. NASDAQ has never been this high. It's the third record in a row. This is the longest winning streak since 2015. It's evidence investors are unfazed by President Trump's political troubles because huge corporate profits are driving stocks higher. More on that in a few moments. It is still made in America week, and the president is wrapping it up uh, by touting a deal between these three companies, pharmaceutical companies Pfizer and Merck and manufacturer Corning. Together, they will produce a new type of glass for injectable drugs. Pharmaceutical glass packaging will now be made in America. That's a big step. That's a big statement. We're very proud of that. Thank you very much, by the way. And I know they wouldn't have done it under another, other, another administration. Okay, that's an important deliverable for Made in America Week. Until now, 98 percent of pharmaceutical glass packaging was made overseas. But this program has been in the works since 2012. So. The President, that last sort of unscripted comment he made uh, d doesn't hold there. Corning will invest $500 million initially, but that investment is expected to grow to $4 billion, creating at least 4,000 new high-tech jobs. The CEOs of Pfizer, Merck, and Corning were present at the announcement. The companies still need federal government approval to move forward with the deal, including approval from the FDA for the product itself. Now, O.J. Simpson, he will be out of prison. Lincoln Park.
Will the special counsel probe lead to presidential pardons? The new report's breaking down the White House's new battle plan. Shaking things up, the big reason behind big changes in the president's legal team. And he's set for parole, but still creating controversy. What O.J. Simpson said about his past before a panel decided his future. Welcome back to Early Start this Friday morning. I'm Christine Roman. Friday, Friday. Happy Friday to you. I'm Miguel Marquez. It is 30 minutes past the hour. Up first, explosive new reporting this morning. The president's lawyers are looking for ways to undermine the Russia investigation by special counsel Robert Mueller. The Washington Post and New York Times report attorneys and aides are scouring the backgrounds of Mueller and his staff searching for conflicts of interest they can use to undercut the Russia probe. The papers cite several sources familiar with the research effort. The Washington Post also reporting the president has asked about his power to pardon aides, family members, even himself. One advisor told the Post the president was simply curious about the reach of his pardoning authority. Uh, this follows the president's earlier attacks on Mueller and other officials connected to the Russia investigation. CNN's Jeff Zeleny has more this morning for us from the White House. Christina Miguel, President Trump and the White House increasingly focused on that special counsel's investigation, that independent investigation into the Russian meddling of the 2016 election. But there are indications that the investigation is spreading beyond simple election meddling. President Trump made that indication in his interview with The New York Times earlier this week when he talked about special prosecutor Robert Mueller and the idea that he could be looking into the Trump family's uh, finances. Now, the president said he thought that would be outside of the purview of that, but this is increasingly uh, dominating much of the conversation here at the White House. As the legal team is looking at strategies here, the Washington Post and the New York Times are both reporting this morning that the president is also looking into ways to disrupt this investigation. They're looking into the background of the uh, attorneys working on this investigation. It just shows how much time and attention here at the White House is being focused on this. So much fallout reverberating from that interview with the New York Times earlier this week about the president expressing his blistering disappointment with the attorney general. It has sent shockwaves throughout this uh, west wing of the White House, largely because the attorney general is one of the most loyal soldiers in the Trump army. He was one of the earliest supporters. He was, in fact, the earliest Republican senator to sign on. But as we end this week, the six-month mark of this presidency, this Russia investigation, dominating many things here at the White House. Christina Miguel. Jeff Zeleny, thank you very much. As for the attorney general, he's shrugging off President Trump's attack. The president said he should have hired someone else if he knew Sessions would recuse himself in the Russia probe. The attorney general is determined to stay put for the time being. I have uh, the honor of serving in, as attorney general. It's something that uh, uh, goes beyond any thought I would have ever had for myself. We love this job. We love this department. And I plan to continue to do so as long as uh, that is appropriate. Now, with more on the attorney general's response and damage control at the White House, CNN's Jessica Snyder in Washington. Christina Miguel, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, he seems to be rebuffing speculation that he might resign in the wake of President Trump's harsh words about him in the New York Times. Well, of course, the president expressed his anger at Sessions' decision to recuse himself from the Russia investigation back on March 2nd. The president saying in that New York Times interview that the decision was, quote, unfair to the president and that President Trump wouldn't have asked him to become attorney general if he knew Sessions would remove himself from overseeing the investigation. Of course, those comments drew a lot of speculation, but White House Deputy Press Secretary uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she's clarified in part, saying that the president does have confidence in Sessions, but really was just disappointed in the decision Sessions made to recuse. Clearly, he has confidence in him or he would not be the attorney general. I think you uh, know this president well enough to know that if he wanted somebody uh, to take an action, he would make that quite clear. Well, Sarah Huckabee Sanders also added to these comments, saying the president does not intend to fire Mueller, but that the president believes the special counsel should not move outside the scope of the investigation, though, of course, the scope of that investigation is up for interpretation about how broad it might be. Christina Miguel. All right, Jessica, thank you for that. Now, with all that in mind, the president is reshuffling the legal team uh, charged with helping him navigate this Russia probe. Two sources tell CNN the president's longtime personal attorney, Mark Kasowitz, 
will see his role as lead lawyer on the Russia issue diminish. Now, Washington, veteran Washington attorney John Dowd and another Trump lawyer, Jay Sekulow, will take the lead as the president's personal attorneys on the Russia inquiry. The sources say that by working outside the White House, Dowd and Sekulow's dealings with the president will be protected by the same attorney-client privilege afforded all U.S. citizens. Inside the White House, attorney Ty Cobb will take the lead on legal and communication strategy for Russia. He'll be effectively replacing communication strategist Mark Corallo, who resigned on Thursday. All right, Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley threatening to subpoena both Donald Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort to appear before his committee. We're asking for voluntary appearance. I've indicated that we would subpoena if they don't come. Is there a deadline associated with that? Uh, we are having a hearing next uh, Wednesday, so obviously we want to hear right away. Trump Jr. and Manafort are scheduled to testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee Wednesday, but neither man has publicly confirmed he will appear. The top Democrat on the committee is Senator, California Senator Dianne Feinstein also reiterating the subpoena threat. Now we're also learning this morning Jared Kushner's closed-door session with the Senate Intel Committee next week will be with staff. It's not clear yet when he'll meet with senators themselves. This is now being called an interview, not testimony. Meantime, CNN has exclusively learned Jared Kushner's status as a top aide to President Trump still being used to lure Chinese investors to his family's New Jersey development. Kushner's name being used in an online promotion by two businesses working with Kushner companies, describing him in Chinese as, quote, the celebrity of the family and, quote, Mr. Perfect Jared Kushner. It comes after his family apologized in May for using Kushner's name during a, a sales pitch. I thought you were Mr. Perfect. I am Mr. Perfect. They clearly have it wrong. A uh, confidant of President Trump now under consideration for White House Communications Director. Two senior administration officials telling CNN Anthony Scaramucci has been interviewed for the job and was spotted at the White House Thursday night. The hedge fund manager was an advisor for President Trump's transition team. If he is hired, the big question... What happens to other key members of the communications team? Sean Spicer, the press secretary, has stayed mostly behind the scenes during the communications director's search. It is unclear what happens once that post is filled. All right, the U.S. is fining ExxonMobil for violating Russian sanctions while Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was still in charge. The Treasury Department is slapping a $2 million fine on ExxonMobil, claiming it demonstrated reckless disregard for the sanctions. It stems from a 2014 deal between Exxon executives and this man, Igor Session. Session runs the state-run oil company Rosneft. He is a close ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin. His assets were blocked as part of U.S. sanctions in 2014 on Russia uh, for, for annexing Crimea. Now, the Treasury didn't specify the Exxon executives involved and didn't name Tillerson. Tillerson stepped down as CEO last year, but had personal dealings with Session when he ran Exxon Mobil. And this move raises concerns over his deep business ties in Russia. Exxon says the fine is fundamentally unfair. All right, another record high for the NASDAQ, a third in a row, the longest winning streak since 2015. It is evidence investors are unfazed by President Trump's political troubles, higher corporate profits, and a strong earning season. More on this in a few moments, but a stunning string of record highs in the stock market. It is still made in America week, and the president is wrapping it up by touting a deal between these three companies, pharmaceutical companies Pfizer and Merck, and manufacturer Corning. Together, they will produce a new type of glass for injectable drugs. Pharmaceutical glass packaging will now be made in America. That's a big step. That's a big statement. We're very proud of that. Thank you very much, by the way. New this morning reports the president's legal team is looking to undercut the special counsel on Russia. It could set up a major conflict between the White House and Robert Mueller. And the president's legal team shaken up. Who is stepping away from the spotlight and why? And O.J. Simpson is set to go free after nine years behind bars. What he's saying about his past as he looks forward to life on the outside. I guess October is when that official parole happens. Sometime right? in October, October, indeed. Good morning. Welcome to Early Start. I'm Christine Romans. And I'm Miguel Marquez. It is Friday, July 21st. Happy Friday, Friday to you.
It is 5 a.m. here on the East Coast. Up first, explosive new reporting this morning. The president's lawyers are looking for ways to undermine the Russia investigation by special counsel Robert Mueller. The Washington Post and New York Times report attorneys and aides are scouring the backgrounds of Mueller and his staff, searching for conflicts of interest they can use to undercut the Russia probe. The papers cite several sources familiar with the research effort. The Washington Post also reporting the president has asked about his, his power to pardon aides, family members, even himself. Now, one advisor told the Post, you know, the president was simply curious about the reach of his pardoning authority. This follows the president's earlier attacks on Mueller and, and other officials connected to the Russia investigation. CNN's Jeff Zeleny has more from the White House. Christina Miguel, President Trump in the White House increasingly focused on that special counsel's investigation, that independent investigation into the Russian meddling of the 2016 election. But there are indications that the investigation is spreading beyond simple election meddling. President Trump made that indication in his interview with the New York Times earlier this week when he talked about special prosecutor Robert Mueller and the idea that he could be looking into the Trump family's uh, finances. Now, the president said he thought that would be outside of the purview of that, but this is increasingly uh, dominating much of the conversation here at the White House. As the legal team is looking at strategies here, the Washington Post and the New York Times are both reporting this morning that the president is also looking into ways to disrupt this investigation. They're looking into the background of the uh, attorneys working on this investigation. It just shows how much time and attention here at the White House is being focused on this. So much fallout reverberating from that interview with the New York Times earlier this week about the president expressing his blistering disappointment with the attorney general. It has sent shockwaves throughout this uh, west wing of the White House, largely because the attorney general is one of the most loyal soldiers in the Trump army. He was one of the earliest supporters. He was, in fact, the earliest Republican senator to sign on. But as we end this week, the six-month mark of this presidency, this Russia investigation, dominating many things here at the White House. Christina Miguel. Thanks to Jeff Zeleny. Now, with all that in mind, the president is reshuffling the legal team charged with helping him navigate the Russia probe. Two sources tell CNN the president's longtime personal attorney, Mark Kasowitz, will see his role as lead, lo lead lawyer on the Russia investigation diminished. Now, veteran Washington attorney John Dowd and another Trump lawyer, Jay Sekulow, will take the lead as the president's personal attorneys on the Russia inquiry. The sources say by working outside the White House, a Dowd and Sekulow's dealings with the president will be protected by the same attorney-client privilege afforded all U.S. citizens. Inside the White House, attorney Ty Cobb will take the lead on legal and communication strategy for Russia. He'll be effectively replacing communication strategist Mark Corallo, who resigned on Thursday. Now, helping us understand all this, bring it into sharp focus this morning is political economist Greg Valliere, chief strategist at Horizon Investments. Good morning, morning Greg. to you. Good morning. Uh, Hi, so there is a lot of movement at the White House. Uh, I take it this doesn't uh, have much of an effect on the stock market or how the, uh, the economy is going. Well, it's affected the dollar, I think. Finally, after hmm. months and months of people saying this doesn't make, mean anything for the markets, Oh, no, I do think the dollar's weakness is because of this. And things have gotten worse this week for the agenda in particular, which the markets really care about. Well, talk to me a little bit about Russia fever and how each of these developments, uh, you know, kind of puts the agenda further on the back page, if you will. Where are we on health care? Where are we on tax reform? Well, first of all, Christine, I think this obsession that the president has with picking the scab. When we were kids, our parents told us, don't pick scabs. So he keeps <laughs> picking the scab on Russia. And now you have a situation in the last 48 hours where, you know, maybe he's being investigated for obstruction of justice. What does he do? He indicates that he would like to obstruct justice. So I think the story's gotten a lot worse for uh, tax reform, certainly for a budget deal. And I think the the health bill cannot be resurrected. Even if everything was going peachy keen at the White House and they had a setback with the, uh, the, the health care bill dying, I mean, they were counting on that in order to get to tax reform. I mean, where does this leave things now? Absolutely right. The, 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 the progression was going to be health reform, budget, 
taxes. That, those were the three. Well, if health reform is dead, uh, that does not set a very good stage for the budget fight, which has the Republicans equally divided. Right. So I'm not sure this very radical House budget will even make it through the Senate. If they don't get a budget, that means there's not a reconciliation resolution sounding wonky this morning, but you need that <laughs> resolution to move ahead on taxes. So if this progression is now derailed, yeah. I think we're looking at 2018 before we get anything done yeah. on taxes. If you can't be wonky with us at 5.08 in the morning, <laughs> you can't be wonky right. anywhere, right? Yeah. There are three yeah. months to open enrollment. This is what is so shocking to me. There are three months to open enrollment where 10 million people are going to have to sign up for health care and another 22 million who are uninsured right now uh, could be or should be under the law. They should be penalized to get a little fine on their tax return next year for not getting insurance if they don't, right? So this is still the law of the land, yet we have no idea what the next step is going to be in terms of in terms of fixing it. And indeed, the president keeps going back to the Russia scab. I think that's a really good analogy. In particular, we heard yesterday from Sarah Huckabee Sanders about, um, about Mueller and whether he would stay in that job. Let's listen. Look, I mean, I can't predict everything that could possibly take place in the future and what Mueller could potentially do that might create uh, outrageous, you know, reason not to take action. So I, I'm not going to talk about hypotheticals. I can talk about where we are today, and that's the position of the president. Knowing what you know about the demeanor of the president, about um, how thick or thin his skin is in regards to um, Russia, how dangerous politically, um, I mean, both for, 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 for the political economy and the overall yeah. economy and for just stability in Washington, is, the, is this Mueller situation? It's huge, Christine. I think that this extraordinary interview with the New York Times made it clear that if Mueller goes to uh, Trump's finances, gets close to Trump's family, he could get fired. And I think if, if he gets fired, that could lead to a real crisis, a, an impeachment crisis. I, as the summer began, I told everybody, including you, that maybe there was a 5% chance of impeachment. It could be up to 20 or 25%, the way things are unfolding right now. But you said something a second ago about uh, the budget and tax reform being moved into 2018. Right. Is that really, I mean, the whole idea of getting this done now was to do it ahead of right. the, 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 the midterm elections. Right. Is anything really going to get done in 2018 in Washington, D.C.? Oh, I, th I do think there will be a modest tax bill in 2018. I just think it'll take a long time, and the budget fight will, will complicate this. And Christine is right. For the insurers, they're going to have to announce their rates. And I sure. think that for Donald Trump to say, I don't own health reform, oh, no, he yeah. owns health reform. And I think the Republicans are going to have to go to the Democrats and say, we need to help the insurers. So, yeah. so there, will be, there will be some things happening later this year, but the timetable has been greatly delayed because Trump can't stay on message. He has so much leverage. I mean, he holds all the cards in, in what happens with health care reform. And I, I mean it because his agencies are the ones who have to pay for right. the advertising and do a you know, public relations campaign to roll out, uh, you know, remind people it is open enrollment and this is the number you call and this is, these are the options for you. Yep. Um, his, his, his IRS has to do the, the, the fines subsidies as well. and the subsidies. You know? So, I mean, it's, it's incredibly important. This is happening right now and it affects millions of people. And, Quick and make, make no mistake, Christine, he owns it. Yeah. Quickly, does he also own the stock market rally? Because privately he tells people in Bedminster this weekend, he was, you know, a lot of people were congratulating him, thanking him for uh, yep. making them richer because of the stock market. Does he own this too? You got to be fair. I mean, there's a real pro business climate here in this city, and he has a lot to do with it. But the fundamentals are great low inflation, low unemployment, steady interest rates, good corporate earnings. There's a lot that goes into that. But again, guys, Watch the dollar. The dollar's really in free fall, and I think one of the reasons is all of this dysfunction in Washington. All right, so the market reaction to the dysfunction into the Russia probe is in the dollar. Meanwhile, people with money keep making money. Right. Working class, I don't know if we've really seen the recovery quite yet, but maybe yeah. that's the more. Thanks, Greg. We'll talk to you in a couple, Thanks, couple of minutes. You bet. Uh, the U.S. is fining ExxonMobil for violating uh, Russian sanctions while Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was still in charge. The Treasury Department is slapping a $2 million fine on the company, claiming it demonstrated reckless disregard for the sanctions. It stems from a 2014 deal between Exxon executives and this guy, Igor Session. Session runs the state-run oil company in Russia, Rosneft. 
and is a close ally, of course, to Russian President Vladimir Putin. His assets, Sessions' assets, were blocked as part of U.S. sanctions in 2014 on Russia for annexing Crimea. Now, the Treasury Department didn't specify which Exxon executives were involved. It did not name Tillerson. Tillerson, of course, stepped down as CEO last year. He had personal business dealings with Session when he ran ExxonMobil, and this move raises concerns over his deep business ties in Russia. Exxon says the find is fundamentally unfair, and Exxon, in response, filed a complaint against the Treasury Secretary, Steven Mnuchin, at his who taught... New this morning reports the president's legal team is looking to undercut the special counsel on Russia. It could set up a major conflict between the White House and Robert Mueller. The president's legal team shaken up who is stepping away from the spotlight and why. And O.J. Simpson set to go free. What he's saying about his past as he looks forward to life on the outside. Good morning and welcome to Early Start. I'm Miguel Marquez. And I'm Christine Friday. Romans. Happy Friday to you. It is Friday, July 21st. It is 4 a.m in the east good morning everyone up first explosive new reporting this morning uh, the president's lawyers are looking for ways to undermine the investigation by special counsel robert Mueller. the washington post and the new york times report attorneys and aides are scouring the backgrounds of Mueller and his staff searching for conflicts of interest they can use to undercut the russia probe the papers cite several sources familiar with this research effort now, the washington post also reporting the president has asked about his power to Pardon aides, family members, even himself. One advisor told the Post the president was simply curious about the reach of his pardoning authority. This follows the president's earlier attacks on Mueller and other officials connected to the Russia investigation. CNN's Jeff Zeleny has more from the White House. Christina Miguel, President Trump and the White House increasingly focused on that special counsel's investigation, that independent investigation into the Russian meddling of the 2016 election. But there are indications that the investigation is spreading beyond simple election meddling. President Trump made that indication in his interview with The New York Times earlier this week when he talked about special prosecutor Robert Mueller and the idea that he could be looking into the Trump family's uh, finances. Now, the president said he thought that would be outside of the uh, purview of that. But this is increasingly uh, dominating much of the conversation here at the White House as the legal team is looking at strategies here. The Washington Post and The New York Times are both reporting this morning that the president is also looking into ways to disrupt this investigation. They're looking into the background of the uh, attorneys working on this investigation. It just shows how much time and attention here at the White House is being focused on this. So much fallout reverberating from that interview with The New York Times earlier this week about the president expressing his blistering disappointment with the attorney general. It has sent shockwaves throughout this uh, west wing of the White House, largely because the attorney general is one of the most loyal soldiers in the Trump army. He was one of the earliest supporters. He was, in fact, the earliest Republican senator to sign on. But as we end this week, the six-month mark of this presidency, this Russia investigation, dominating many things here at the White House. Christina Miguel. All right, Jeff Zeleny, thank you for that. As for the attorney general, he is shrugging off President Trump's uh, biting attack. The president said he'd have hired someone else if he knew Sessions would recuse himself in the Russia probe. The attorney general was determined to stay put for the time being. I have uh, the honor of serving in, as attorney general. It's something that uh, uh, goes beyond any thought I would have ever had for myself. We love this job, we love this department, and I plan to continue to do so as long as uh, that is appropriate. With uh, more on the Attorney General's response and damage control at the White House, CNN's Jessica Schneider for us in Washington. Christina Miguel, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, he seems to be rebuffing speculation that he might resign in the wake of President Trump's harsh words about him in the New York Times. Well, of course, the president expressed his anger at Sessions' decision to recuse himself from the Russia investigation back on March 2nd. The president saying in that New York Times interview that the decision was, quote, unfair to the president and that President Trump wouldn't have asked him to become attorney general if he knew Sessions would remove himself from overseeing the investigation. 
of course, those comments drew a lot of speculation. But White House Deputy Press Secretary uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she's clarified in part, saying that the president does have confidence in Sessions, but really was just disappointed in the decision Sessions made to recuse. Clearly, he has confidence in him or he would not be the attorney general. I think you uh, know this president well enough to know that if he wanted somebody uh, to take an action, he would make that quite clear. Christina Miguel. Thanks, Jessica, for that. Now, with all that in mind, the president is reshuffling the legal team charged with helping him navigate that Russia probe. Two sources tell CNN the president's longtime personal attorney, Mark Kasowitz, will see his role as lead lawyer on the Russia investigation diminish. And now veteran Washington attorney John Dowd and another Trump lawyer, Jay Sekulow, will lead uh, the president's personal attorneys as on that Russia inquiry. The sources say by working outside the White House, Dowd and Sekulow's dealings with the president will be protected by the same attorney-client privilege afforded all U.S. citizens inside the White House. Attorney Ty Cobb will take the lead on legal and communication strategy for Russia. He'll be effectively replacing communication strategist Mark Corallo, who resigned on Thursday. Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley threatening to subpoena both Donald Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort to appear before his committee. We ask him for voluntary appearance. I've indicated that we would subpoena if they don't come. Is there a deadline associated with that? Uh, we are having a hearing next uh, Wednesday, so obviously we want to hear right away. A Trump Jr. and Manafort are scheduled to testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee on Wednesday, but neither has publicly confirmed he will appear. The top Democrat on the committee, Calif California Senator Dianne Feinstein, also reiterating the subpoena threat. We're also learning this morning Jared Kushner's closed-door session with the Senate Intelligence Committee next week will be with staff. It's not yet clear when he will meet with senators. This is now being called... Miguel, an interview, not testimony. Huh. Uh, meantime, CNN has exclusively learned Jared Kushner's status as a top aide to President Trump is still being used to lure Chinese investors to his family's New Jersey development. Kushner's name being used in an on, on an online promotion by two businesses working with Kushner companies, describing him in Chinese as, quote, the celebrity of the family and Mr. Perfect Jared Kushner. It comes after his family apologized in May for using Kushner's name during a sales pitch. All right, a confidant of uh, President Trump now under consideration for White House Communications Director. Uh, two, two senior administration officials telling CNN Anthony Scaramucci has been interviewed for the job and was spotted at the White House Thursday night. He is a hedge fund manager. He was an advisor for the president's transition team. If he is hired, the big question, what happens to the other key members of the communications team? Uh, Sean Spicer, the press secretary, has stayed mostly behind the scenes during the communications director's search. It is unclear what happens once that post is filled. All right, the U.S. is fining ExxonMobil for violating Russian sanctions while Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was in charge. The Treasury Department is slapping a $2 million fine on the company, claiming it demonstrated reckless disregard for those Russia sanctions. This stems from a 2014 deal between Exxon execs and this man, Igor Session. Session runs the state-run oil company Rosneft and is a close ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin. His assets were blocked as part of U.S. sanctions in 2014 on Russia for annexing Crimea. Now, the Treasury Department did not specify the Exxon executives involved. It did not name Tillerson. Tillerson stepped down as CEO last year but had personal business dealings with Session when he ran ExxonMobil. And this move raises concerns again over his deep business ties in Russia. Exxon says the fine is fundamentally unfair and in response filed a complaint against the Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin adding that the charges are inconsistent with the explicit guidance the White House issued at that time. Fascinating, isn't it? It's the Treasury Department versus the State Department. Oh, bizarre. I don't well, know if we've ever had versus, a situation like that. Not versus the State Department, versus ExxonMobil and the guy who right. runs the State Department used to run ExxonMobil at that time. It is a, uh, a tangled web. Discover the story only your DNA can tell. Order your kit now at Ancestry DNA. Is CNN breaking news. Breaking news. President Trump's lawyers reportedly seeking to undercut Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. This is CNN Tonight. I'm Don Lemon. The Washington Post is reporting the president is asking whether he can pardon aides, family, even himself. 
That comes as he doubles down on his warning to Mueller uh, that looking into his family's finances would be a fireable offense. White House spokesman Sarah Huckabee Sanders saying Trump's warning made clear Mueller, quote, should not move outside the scope of the investigation. Now members of the president's own party are warning him not to fire Mueller. Meanwhile, Attorney General Jeff Sessions vowing to stay on the job, in his words, as long as that is appropriate. We have a lot to get to this evening. I want to get right, though, to CNN senior White House correspondent Jeff Zelny, CNN politics executive uh, editor at large, I should say, Chris Saliza, and political analyst April Ryan. My goodness, uh, every night there's something. Jeff, I want to get to this big news from the Washington Post tonight. Here's what the Post is reporting. Some of, and this is a quote, some of President uh, Trump's lawyers are exploring ways to limit or undercut special counsel Robert S. Mueller III's Russia investigation, building a case against what they allege are his conflicts of interest and discussing the president's authority to grant pardons, according to people familiar with the effort. Jeff, why would the president be asking about a pardon? Well, Don, this is something that uh, we got a glimpse of in the president's own interview with The New York Times that is still causing shockwaves more than 24 hours later. And it was uh, he was raising the question of a conflict of interest of a Robert to Mueller, the special prosecutor in this case, who is, you know, really conducting what is now a widening, deepening uh, investigation that appears to go beyond um, election meddling in the 2016 election. And it is clear the president and his team are focusing intently on the uh, potential conflicts of interest, as they're saying. But they're also talking about uh, pardons. This Washington Post story, very interesting in the sense that the president is basically talking aloud now. We've heard him in so many different respects, uh, you know, when he's talking about legislation, other things. Now he is uh, doing it on this uh, legal case here, and he is indeed asking uh, about his options. If, you know, as president, if he could pardon someone, if he could possibly even pardon himself, now, this, I'm told that these are just discussions happening. This is the, at the very beginning of this investigation here. But, Donna, it just shows you how much time, energy, and effort uh, is now consuming the White House on this. On the sixth month of the president's time in office, this uh, begins the sixth month or ends the first six months, and it is something that is really all-consuming here. And that Jeff Sessions interview with uh, the president uh, um, um, about Jeff Sessions had a chilling effect in the words of one White House uh, official told me earlier today, Don, they said that the thinking generally is if the president can say that about the most loyal soldier that he has, what will he do to some of us if we don't do the right thing here? So at the end of the six month mark, this is not where anyone thought they would be, Don. Interesting. Uh, Chris, let's, let's talk about uh, what's going on here. Because, in fact, the president talked about what he says are Mueller's conflicts of interest. And I want to read uh, from the New York Times. Sure. Uh, he said, we were interviewing, he was talking to Maggie uh, Haberman and Mr. Schmidt of, of the New York Times. He says, we're interviewing replacements at the FBI. Did you know Mueller was one of the people uh, that was being interviewed? Haberman, I did, actually. Trump, he was sitting in that chair. He, uh, we had a wonderful meeting, Haberman. The day before, right? And then Schmidt said, yeah, did, did he want the job? And then um, Trump says, the day before, of course, he was up here and he wanted, he wanted the job, Haberman. And he made that clear to you. He would have. And then Trump says, so now what happens is he leaves the office. Rosenstein leaves the office. The next day he is appointed special counsel. I said, what the hell is this all about? You know, first of all, he said, we're not aware of any of this. Secondly, uh, he raised the question that he thought that, you know, what we reported indicates that uh, the special counsel is going beyond.